On Saturday, April the 5th, refugee rights supporters gathered outside the Villawood Detention Centre to protest the removal of refugees to remote centres in Northern Territory and Western Australia. The aim of this protest is to draw attention to the vicious miserableness of the Australian government's stance towards refugees. Refugees! Racism! The government claims their removal is required because the centre is about to be renovated. Protesters claim the real reason is to limit their access to legal representation. What this move is about is a making Villawood a far more secure detention centre, something that looks like Yonga Hill, Christmas Island, something that looks like Curtin Detention Centre. Previously, the government had disclosed the personal details of refugees on the Department of Immigration's website, breaching their right to privacy. Many of the relocated refugees were preparing to sue the government in relation to that breach. We do have to think about looking at a mass civil disobedience component of this campaign, which has been waiting for 20 years. This morning we'll do whatever we possibly can to stop the buses, but even if the buses do get through, that's not the end of the campaign. And I'm here with a group of women who visit two or three times a week. And we're here because we love our friends and we wanted to say goodbye. We're extremely concerned about our friend Yamar. He has been in detention in Australia for five years. He's a stateless Kurdish Iranian. He's a beautiful, wonderful young man, gentle, loved and respected by all his friends. It's really important that you're here. You, I know you've all got contacts in there and you're aware of that. Ima had formed a relationship with a woman who visits him. By moving him to a WA detention centre, they will no longer be able to see each other. The federal government under Tony Abbott have decided to split up this young couple when the immigration department already knew full well Ima was near breaking point. In despair, Ima slashed his wrists. He's still alive. He was in hospital. Uh, the wounds apparently cut down right to the tendon. He was still put on the bus. We're here to let those people who are being shifted, those people who have got all kinds of connections with the community, with legal support, with the people who visit them week in, week out. <laughs> Let them know it doesn't matter where they go, there is a movement which will reach out to Curtin, to Yonga Hill, to Christmas Island, and Manus Island and Nauru if that's what it takes to actually build that movement and make sure that they come out of the detention centres. Yeah,